I am getting cooked in the sun here, but uh, tonight is all about astrophotography with a camera lens. Specifically the Rokinon 135mm f2, but also the Canon 300mm f4. But before we get into that, where the heck am I? Okay, I brought a telescope too, but the Red Cat, I think we can all agree, is the closest telescope to a lens at 250. Whew. I'd like to apologize for my disheveled appearance. I'm just basically surviving out here. It's like crazy hot, bugs are all over me, and uh, what's the, the butane ran out on the thermosol, so uh, I brought an empty thermosol with me. So I want to start out by saying that the conditions do not look good tonight. It's hazy clouds in the sky right now and it's not supposed to get any better uh, it's supposed to get actually a lot worse after 11 p.m so this whole night could be for nothing but we'll see i'm at a really special place right now this is somewhere i used to come all the time before i had a backyard and uh, it's a nice dark sky site about an hour from home and i haven't been here in so long i really miss it it's actually changed a whole lot you know those bugs that just, they circle and just dive bomb your head and like for no reason, like clearly they don't fear getting whacked or, or even dying by me smacking them. They're the worst bugs of all time and they're everywhere right now. Like I rubbed bug spray into my hair like shampoo and they do not seem to mind. Anyway, I wish I had one of those electric tennis rackets. Anyways, this is a Bortle scale class four site. So much better than class seven at home, much darker skies. And what do I always say when you get to a dark sky site, take advantage by shooting some broadband wide angle shots. Cause that's something you just can't do from home. This is a very portable setup that's been selected for the imaging target for tonight, which is Comet Neowise, which hopefully I'll be able to see if it clears these trees and these clouds go away. When people ask if it's possible to do astrophotography with a camera lens instead of a telescope, it may seem obvious to amateur astrophotographers that have been at this a while because of course, a camera lens is just like a refractor telescope with a shorter focal length in most cases. Telescopes have focal lengths of 2,000 3,000 millimeters sometimes, whereas camera lenses are more like 14 millimeter, 24 millimeter, 300 millimeter. It's the star tracker that makes the difference. In this case, the Skywatcher Star Adventure, it's a portable star tracker. So it spins and compensates for that apparent rotation of the night sky. Once you get that down, you can put anything you want on there and take long exposure images, whether it's a wide angle camera lens, a telescope, anything. Obviously, as that focal length increases, the tracking accuracy demand becomes a lot stronger. But astrophotography with a camera lens is probably the best way for everyone to get started, especially with those shorter focal lengths. Of course, you need a tracking mount that can support the weight of your optics. In this case, it's a rather lightweight system, the 300 millimeter F4 and the Canon EOS RA. No problem for the Star Adventure with a little counterweight attached there. If you're getting into some bigger stuff, that's when you need those bigger telescope mounts. If we're talking about lenses for astrophotography, it's impossible to ignore the Rokinon or... What the heck is... Sam Yang. If we're talking astrophotography lenses, it's impossible to ignore the Rokinon or Sam Yang 135mm f2. This lens has quite the reputation in the astrophotography community 
probably because it's so affordable and it's so useful. It's a no brainer as far as getting a lens for astrophotography. That 135 millimeter focal length is just that sweet spot. I use the phrase sweet spot too much, I know that. It's that nice focal length where it's in deep to get some details, but it's out far enough to capture a really wide field image. So pair that with a full frame camera like the Canon EOS RA, and man, you've got some incredible shots. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do with it tonight. So after I capture those shots of Comet Neowise, I'm going to turn the lens towards Rho Ophiuchus to capture that. I've always had trouble with that one, just the, nothing worked out right, and it doesn't look like it's going to tonight either. But this 135 millimeter F2, that F ratio of F2 is very important. So when it comes to lenses, you of course want something that lets in a lot of light. F2 is a fast lens. There's faster lenses for sure, but even then you might have to stop it down because stars are really demanding on a camera lens. So if you shoot it wide open, say it's a 50 millimeter F1.8, or the 135 F2, if you shoot wide open, chances are those stars aren't gonna look great specifically towards the edges of the images. But if you stop it down a little bit, so with this one, I've seen great images taken at F2.8. You get some incredible shots and you're soaking in a lot of light, which means of course you can dial back that exposure time and your ISO. So tonight for my shots with this lens, I think I'm gonna go with ISO 800 for 120 seconds, two minutes. Another aspect of astrophotography with a lens that I love is that it's so approachable that a lot of people have a DSLR camera and a kit lens in their house right now. And yes, you can do astrophotography with it. So even though you need a star tracker or an equatorial mount to take those track long exposure shots, you can certainly take pretty amazing images just on a stationary tripod as well. Experiment with some of those higher ISOs, longer exposures, and get under a dark sky. That really is one of the most important factors. Get somewhere dark. If you're going to the cottage or somewhere away from light pollution, point that camera and lens upward, use a low F ratio, and see what you get. Focusing can certainly be difficult, but for that, use the live view function of your camera and either focus on a really bright star or a bright light and then pan over to the area of the night sky that you wanna photograph. Experiment, I'm confident that you'll get it to work. To control this rig, I just have a remote shutter release cable so I can semi-automate the sequence of images and set it to take, say, 50 times 15 second exposures. I'll do that for the comet. And then more importantly, when I do some more long exposure stuff at two minutes, I can use that remote shutter release cable to just kind of automate things so I can walk away from the camera. I'm not standing there pressing the shutter. This is roughly where Comet Neowise will be located in the night sky. Obviously we're looking west towards the sunset. Yeah, the clouds have dissipated quite a bit. So in the next half hour or so, I might actually get a view of this comet. Okay, an update. 
The clouds are rolling in, but the good news is I got some great shots of Comet Neowise through the 300 millimeter lens. It was very low over the trees, but I'm just happy that I got it. So I took some 30 second exposures on that. The clouds are kind of taking over things, but I've got the Rokinon 135 F2 pointed up towards Cygnus. I wanted to shoot Rho Ophiuchus, but it being low, there's just clouds everywhere. So straight up is my best chance. And even that, uh, it's pretty hazy. So I'm taking some shots of the Seder region of Cygnus. And uh, yeah, and you know what? I'm pretty happy with what I was able to accomplish tonight.